I was, uh, I was brought on the project as a cultural engagement research fellow who um, was working with the subject of remote intimacy uh, across um, academic and practice uh, or arts organization. So bringing research and practice together. And um, my research is broadly interested in the way in which um, our contemporary experiences of, of life change uh, and how it is influenced by um, digital technologies and the way we interact with each other through social media. So I was in particular looking at, um, at technology, but also at um, in what way we experience our bodies uh, through those technologies, in what way we experience uh, places in which we live, and also how data becomes also part of um, our intimate relation with the world around us. I have a practice in which I've been investigating the impact of digital technologies, mobile technologies, uh, upon the sen sense of self. And more recently, that has now become a kind of the way I describe it now is the impact of the digital body, which is our kind of online profiles, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all of these things, um, compared to our physical body and where our physical body can go versus the digital body. And it's almost a kind of fight between the two. I actually have a background in art history and I'm very interested in portraiture. So I also see these digital profiles as a form of portraiture and self-presentation. And so now what I'm working with uh, increasingly alongside this interest of portraiture is drag, which is obviously a self-constructed uh, idea of a character that now I'm, it's not just me playing, my physical body playing, but other people are doing it as well. So I invite other people to perform with me in the form of this uh, simultaneous performance where it's unclear who is who or where each person is because it's also broadcast on Google Hangout where the idea of place or geography is, is completely lost. And my whole kind of premise behind everything I do is an interest in the impact of technology upon our sense of physicality and in terms of our bodies, in terms of our identities, in terms of um, our sense of self. I don't want to just stop at this idea that intimacy is, is a sexual relation or, um, or something that is only associated with love. Um, so the questions that I wanted to explore in, during this fellowship was um, actually how int intimacy feels and how it, it feels in th when we use our senses to um, maybe to experience intimacy, when we touch, when we smell, um, and each other or another mm -hmm. and become closer because of that or how it feels because we um, interact with our devices which are much closer to us than the bodies that of of those who we love mm -hmm. almost every time you perform and you develop quite particular relations with your other s performance yeah. uh, performer performers and um, I was just wondering if you experience intimacy in those situations. Definitely. I mean, I remember the very first um, Google Hangout we had right at the beginning, the very first performance I did last year. And we had, I had um, Raoul Deneves in Brooklyn. I had Liz Rosenfeld in Berlin. I had Vladimir, who I've still not met, in Belgrade. Basically, it was five people who had never met each other in person at all. Mm. And what I was really interested about with that particular interaction was everybody was really nervous and they all said, I feel really nervous. I think what you're talking about, sort of how intimacy feels, is, is really interesting. It's definitely what kind of um, inspires pretty much all the songs that I write. Mm. But I suppose what I'm doing through the performance is maybe how intimacy looks and where it mm. looks like intimacy, but it isn't intimacy. Okay, uh, I start now. Uh. Instantaneous culture. Instantaneous culture. Why wait for what you wish for? I think for mine, what I'm interested in looking is, is looking at the, the signs and the mm. kind of gestures of intimacy. 
which are um, kind of constructed in a way, or you don't know about the sort of the truth of the intimacy that's being portrayed. Find it on the internet, texting, chatting, twittering, Skype, at what point does intimacy also become display? Mm. And at what point is display portrayed as intimacy? And, and what does that mean about the reading of the image? I think that this, um, this paradox of uh, being private and at the same time being public yeah. and the other way around and the fact that the two actually not only become increasingly blurred but I, th there seems to be no, no border between yeah. them anymore. No. Um, and also in your work intimacy seems to directly connect to identity as yeah. well and that kind of vulnerability that is, that is related to to experience of identities, of different identities, and how our bodies are defined. Yeah, but the words of Sajina, which are often also not, they're often not seen immediately because people see this sexy creature, <coughs> it's a gender ambiguous drag queen person, but then actually the words are actually about loneliness and about um, feeling cut off, and, and it's this sort of the whole thing behind Sajina is she's this drag queen who loves to be the center of attention, uh, but ultimately is very much kind of feels alone and, and, and is sort of bound to her phone and by her phone and by all her contacts and networks, but ultimately kind of there's something lacking. Waiting to breathe, waiting till we leave, waiting till we're there, waiting to sleep, waiting to wake, waiting to feel awake, waiting to be awoken. Waiting for lube, waiting for the loo, waiting for a revelation, waiting for a revolution, waiting to know, waiting for consent, waiting for endorsement, waiting to be paid, waiting to be looked at, waiting to work, waiting to be linked in, waiting to be endorsed, waiting for recommendation, waiting to recommend. So much of our interactions and the way that we experience people, very often we get to know people online first or we'll learn, or we might meet someone and then we look them up online and it's like, the, the, the two, the digital body and the organic body, are kind of like in competition but also complementary to each other. Mm. And so it's this idea of which, who do you get to, which is the easier access to intimacy? Is it through the online stuff or is it through actually getting to know somebody? But also how long it takes to get to know someone physically in a physical kind of situation. And obviously you can go and check someone's profile as often as you want but meeting up has always comes with it all its troubles. <laughs> you know, the body, the physical body can only be in one place at any one time, mm. whereas the digital is all over and ubiquitous and everybody can find it any time. Connection between intimacy and remoteness. Yeah. And the fact that, I mean, obviously you, in your, in your performances, you explore that constantly yeah. and you always work with people who are not with you, mm. not on the same stage, not only that, but also they are not in, even in the same country, yeah. even sometimes not time on the zone. same conti yeah. continent and time zone yeah. and so on. But the performances that you do require almost rehearsing mm. such a, you can say almost it's rehearsing intimacy in yeah. a way that you all start at exactly the same time and that, how, how do you experience that relationship with I mean, people? Is, and, it, and yeah. <coughs> it is actually very intimate and it's, it's very, it actually, having said, talk, we talked before about laughter online and actually we have really laughed because the phone in my wallet where we have this dance move and, and I remember the first time, you know, you don't really feel the impact of the performance till you're actually perform performing in front of an audience. So it's a very different thing also from rehearsing and mostly people are rehearsing in their bedrooms, which is also intimate. So you see inside people's homes. I remember when eBay started, mm. everyone was like, well, these sort of academics were writing things about the photographs on eBay and what people were showing in the background of the mm. things they were buying. Everybody was seeing each other's bedrooms mm. at that point. But the first time that I was performing on stage at the Lowry last year, and the, at this point with the phone in my wallet and just seeing everybody else in the same outfits. And it actually felt extreme, it did feel extremely intimate and I felt extremely close to everybody. <laughs> I think the intimacy and the kind of sympathy that you have for a performer is, operates still very differently when it's live mm. than when it's just online. The, the way we are intimate with each other when we are next to each other, but actually it is about creating a very different way of being intimate yeah. with others. There is this necessity to learn about particular ways of, of, um, 
of being together over the phone, right? So yeah. we are still, for example, quite annoyed when we hear private conversations in our vicinity mm. on in the public, public place because actually we still don't know how to respond to mm. that, right? It's not, it's not a, um, uh, it's not a conversation, intimate conversation that is that necessarily affects me, but it does affect the way I feel about hearing it. Yeah. My wallet got my phone, my wallet got my phone, my wallet got my phone. I've got my phone, my wallet got my phone, my wallet got my phone, my wallet got my phone. Got my phone, got my phone, I've got my phone, my wallet got my phone.